good to be here tonight. And, uh, and I mean that literally. Literally. It's good to be here. Um, we're blessed that we have health, we have life, we have strength, and that God is with us. And um, we had to visit someone in a psychiatric unit yesterday. And sometimes you don't realize how blessed you are until you see Everyone that what? 
So really, that narrows it down, don't it? Mm -hmm. If you don't believe, you don't get it. Yes. Let me repeat that. If you don't believe, now, if you use the word believe in a sentence, you have, they just say, I believe God. Right? Just that sentence right there. I believe in you. I believe in Ford automobiles. I, whatever, the word believe is a what? Is a verb. If you use the word believe in the sentence, it's typically a what? Verb. A verb in its definition is what? An action word. So when you say you believe God, but there's no action with it, then you're just verbalizing. And I know what I'm talking about because Jesus said, you draw nigh unto me with your what? Lips. But your heart is far. Why? Because it's in your heart where action takes place. Right? Bless you. <laughs> it's in your heart where action takes place. And so, there's so many people that name the name of Christ, that name the name of Christ, but there's no action, there's no belief, there's no real belief attached to it. All right? God bless you. And uh, that happens sometimes. <laughs> but, praise God. So, but anyway, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what the power of God unto what? Salvation to everyone that what? Believe. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So we see this central verse, we see this main verse, we see this central verse, this main verse, in a chapter of many things relating to this verse, that is akin to this verse, all right? And so we see that the gospel message is the main thing that has to happen when people are saved. Right? Now just bear with me here. Just kind of work with me here. Because we're going to get to some things in chapter 1 in a minute. But I'm trying to work, lay a foundation in Romans chapter 1 to explain this salvation thing and the how, how salvation, the power comes from the gospel message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Right? Uh, when Jesus is preached, when Jesus is witnessed, when you witness the people and you tell them about Jesus, that's the gospel message. When you preach to people, and on and on and on, whatever you have to do to get the message out is the power of God. Okay? There was a guy, this is not something that we share all the time. And to tell you how powerful the message of salvation is, there was a man that was a, a minister years ago that was practicing a lifestyle that was not conducive to Christianity. But it wasn't known by those in charge. But God revealed it. And so he was called and the reality came out and it all confession. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that even though this man was not practicing the right lifestyle, he was doing things that was not conducive to being a minister, to being a Christian, 
people were getting saved, and people were getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay? People were getting saved, and people were getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And so, the, the head man, the head man said, I have to pray. I got to pray on this. Because it was like a situation that he had never dealt with. And he said that when he began to pray, he said, God told him that, um, he said, God told him that I honor my word. And so it's something about the gospel message that the word of God, when it goes out, it has power. It has power, all right? And I hope he's not allergic to something. Do you think he might be allergic to something? Okay. I was just going to make sure. Because it almost sounds, it seems like he's. It's the funny dust that's getting in my nose. Okay. Oh, bless you. I'm serious about that. I just want to make sure he's okay. And to further reiterate this, how powerful the gospel message is. And how verse 16, as it relates to the whole chapter, we're going to get, like I said, we're going to get to those things. But let me lay the foundation for the gospel message. Let me lay the foundation for how that it is the power of God. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn to it with me uh, as we... Work in this vein, get you try to get you to understand how powerful the gospel message is. Okay. Um, First Corinthians chapter one. Yeah, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. God's good. He, he, is. he really is. God is good. And, uh, we're glad to be here. So First Corinthians chapter one. What are we talking about? The gospel message, the power of God, how powerful it is. And we're laying the foundation for that because we're going to relate it to the other things going on in chapter 1, okay? Now, let's look at verse 16, 17, and 18, okay, of First Corinthians chapter 1. For Christ sent me not. I said six is there. And, and uh, this is Paul relating the message that he that was a, that was an argument that was a schism going on in the church. People were bragging about who they were up on. I'm of Stephen. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of this and I'm of that. Paul said, "I thank God I didn't bat I baptized none." You know. And so this is what he's relating this to. Verse 16. And I baptized also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. In other words, you guys, these are the people that I baptized. All right? For Christ sent me not to what? Baptize. Even though water baptism is necessary. It's part of being saved and all that. It's not the only thing. Some people base that, base water baptism on everything. It's not. But to what? Preach the gospel. Okay? Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of what? Not of faith. So what do we do when we preach the gospel? We preach Christ and him crucified. All right? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. People that's not saved think what we're doing is foolishness. Because they're not changed yet. They're still in the state of sinfulness. And, and, and they consider church folly. And they uh, consider the things of God foolishness. It's to them that perish what? Foolishness. But unto us, which are what? Saved, it is what? The power. Why do we say it's power? Because look at the change that through believing, what do we 
with us, what we just talking about. You heard the gospel message and you what? Believe. You see, you can hear it all day long. We can discuss it all day long. But if you do not what? Believe it. But unto us that what? Believe. That's where the power is. Believe. Believe. In other words, acting on what you heard. Acting on what you heard. And so, that's why I wanted to show you how powerful the gospel message is. And I just uh, think about some of the new people that have been coming. How God is moving in their life. God is touching them. It's because they believe. And when you believe, change comes. Change happens. Why? Because you are acting on what you heard. You, you're believing it. You're, you're, you're responding to it. All right? Now, going back over to Romans chapter 1. So we see the introduction and the salutation. Understanding that verse 16 is the central part of, of chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the what? Holy Scriptures. Concerning who? His son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be what? The Son of God with what? Power. Where's the power? In the declaration, the preaching, the ministering of what? The cross of Jesus Christ. Everything centers around Jesus. Everything revolves around. The whole Bible revolves around Jesus. Time is centered. A.D. and what? I mean B.C. and A.D. Every, and Jesus is at the center of everything. Alright? Everything. He is the centrality. He is the central figure of everything. Even the scene uh, at the crucifixion. He had one thief on one side, one thief on the other, and he was it. Because he's the center of everything. He's the center of gravity. He's the center of it all. And he should be the center of your life. That's why I love that song. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. I love that song. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Yes. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. I believe that with every fiber, he is the center of it all. Amen. Pastor Davis, my beloved pastor that's passed on he preached a message entitled The Centrality of Jesus. Yeah. Man, he, how Jesus is just the, he's the center. My Bible says that where two or more are gathered in my name, that, he would, that will I be where? In the midst of that. Yeah. Uh, Jesus is the, and so we see in the book of Romans chapter 1, how the gospel, verse 16 is the center of everything, right? And then you see how these verses connect. You see how these verses connect to the gospel, connect to Jesus, connect to the, the, the message, connect to his death, his burial, and resurrection. And declare to be, verse 4, the Son of God with what? Power. According to the spirit of holiness. By the what? Resurrection. What's the gospel message? His death burial, and what? Resurrection. Alright? By whom we have what? Received. How do you receive it? By believing. You can't receive it unless you believe it. Alright? Grace 
grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. For his name. So we see, we're not going to read all of that. You see how the, that verse, everything is connected to the gospel, to salvation, to everything that has to relate with Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now I want to show you how it's negatively impacted in, the, in this chapter. I showed you one way, on one end. Now let me show you the other end for people who don't, who don't believe. See, there's always two sides to it, right? There's always two sides. People who believe, they change, they grow, and the power of God works in their life. And then you have people that refuse to believe. There's a lot of people like that. And then you want to, then you want, then now you understand why their life is what it is. Okay? Now, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness. Now, this is the verse right after that verse I read to you, right? Now look at the other side of the spectrum. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed or unleashed or uh, made known from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by what? Faith. Everything that we do in God is by faith. I promise you that. I promise you everything we do is by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodly and unrighteousness of men who what? Hold the truth in what? Unrighteousness. So these are people who have, who have known the gospel, who have heard the gospel, who understand what the gospel is, but just simply refuse to respond to it. Because that which may, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has what? Shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are what? Clearly. There are things that you can witness that will reveal to you that God is real. Like the birth of a child. Like when you see springtime. Things coming from the dead. How are you going to say there's no God? And on and on and on. Just so many. Just invisible things you can see. That you don't have to have anybody explain anything to you. You can look at it and say, man, there's got to be a God in heaven. Yes, Alright? Now, even as he turned power and God did, so that they are what? Without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were what? Thank you. So you got people who have heard the gospel, people who know what the gospel is, people who understand what the gospel is, but they won't retain God in their knowledge. They won't keep God. They won't receive God and appreciate God and give God what he deserves. But became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish hearts, or heart, was what? This is how people get messed up. How do people get messed up mentally, sexually, and all these other things? It all begins with the refusal to obtain, to retain God. Number one, the refusal to retain God in your knowledge. All of this comes from what? Not believing the gospel. This is the other side of the spectrum now, as opposed to people who do, like I just explained to you. The cross, the power of God, all these things, all right? But they became vain in their imagination that their foolish heart was dark. Professing themselves to be wise, when you talk to people, they actually are proud of the fact that they don't believe in God. 
Have you ever talked to people like that? They brag about, I got this. I don't need the church. I don't need the Bible. I don't need all that. I'm my, I'm my own woman. I'm my own man. Until your mind gets messed up. Until your attitude gets messed up. Until you get involved in the wrong thing. And it all starts up here. It all starts up there. The Bible said it became vain. I wonder what it would be like to do that. I wonder what it would be like if I tried that. I wonder what this would, would, would happen if this went on and that one. And it all starts like that. They became vain in their imaginations. You see, you don't get messed up overnight. You don't get messed up overnight. And the important talk was done professing themselves to be wise. They became what? And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. People have turned what God made beautiful into a bad thing. They've changed the use of man and woman and they turn it into trans this and trans that and trans the other. I'm not going to accept what you made me, God. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to have an operation. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get involved in things that are against nature because this is because I've allowed my mind, I've allowed my imaginations to run wild with me because I don't believe God. I believe my own way. Okay? Now this is Bible. This is not my opinion. This is the word of God. Bible said, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now this is the result of people who will not believe God. Okay? And a lot of people don't want to talk about this. They don't want to preach on this. They don't want to do this. And do it. But I'm telling you what the Bible says. I'm not doing it in hate. I'm not doing it in viciousness. I'm, as a matter of fact, I have love in my heart. But right is right and wrong is wrong. Right? I'm, I'm serious. And we don't have to apologize for it either. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause. So they've taken things that God made to be one way, and they're turning it to something different. Okay? And they're doing it in all manner. Weirdness and strange behavior and strange activities. The weirder the better. The stranger the better. The more outlandish the better. See? For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use uh, into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, working that, which is what? Unseen. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. God said error. Uh, he didn't say alternative. He didn't say, oh, it's an alternative lifestyle. He said, error. Huh? Why do you see people like that? Why do you see people involved in behavior that's out of the ordinary? Because they have refused, number one, to retain God in their knowledge. And then they refuse to believe God. And the Bible said their foolish hearts were dark. And God gave them up to vile affections. And what happens to a person? How does a person
person get like that? When God takes his hands off of you, the devil has free course. You don't ever want God to take his hands off of you. Because the Bible said they refused. And it's not like God didn't love them and God didn't care. But after so long, the Bible said they became vain in their thinking. Their foolish hearts was darkened. And they refused to retain God in their knowledge. And so the Bible said God gave them up. In other words, the devil, go do whatever you want to do to them. I've done all I can. That's hard to fathom, isn't it? What, that's, what, what does the Bible say? You see, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to help everybody. But there's many we can't help. There's many we can't help. But I'm just teaching. I'm just sharing. I'm just trying to show you how this one verse, how, how it shows one side of the spectrum, and then it shows another side of the spectrum. All right? When you believe, good things happen in your life. Mm -hmm. When you refuse to believe God and you refuse to accept God, then it's downhill from there. Mm -hmm. It's downhill from there. And um, I want to finish up in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God, there it is again, in their knowledge, God gave them over to a what? Reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient. What happens is, once you get involved in these types of lifestyles, if you continue in them, there comes a point to where God will turn there is a point that you can come back. But if you continue in them, there's a line that you cross. And the Bible said God turned them over to a reprobate. The word reprobate means unable or incapable of receiving forgiveness. You can no longer ever be saved. You're beyond God helping you. No longer can you receive? You're done. Once God turned you over to a reprobate mind, it's, you're done. It's a wrap. And we're trying, as a church, we're trying to prevent this. As a church, we're trying to help people. That's why we have people that come to church that are gay. We're not trying to throw people away. We're trying to help them. Amen. I'm not saying we're we're what, what you call it. That what's the word on you? We're not trying to justify. But you got to try to help me. And we're doing that. But there is a point where God will turn people over. With all these weird and strange and different lifestyles. And we pray tonight. We pray tonight that the mercy of God and the grace of God will be with people that they never get to this point. We're not into throwing people away. We're not into... Uh, you got some preachers, they like preaching on this. They like preaching all this hellfire and brimstone and, and, and putting people in hell and all this. Uh, that's not what it's about. We want to try to help everybody we can. Understanding that we know we're not going to be able to help everybody. But we still want to try to help everybody that we can. We're not, uh, we, we, we're not into throwing people away. But I just wanted to show you in this chapter the dichotomy, the one side of the spectrum and the other side of the spectrum, all based around forgiveness, the blood, the cross, but it all stems from believing and not believing. You understand what I'm saying? The reason why you're where you are is because you believe God. Believe the reason why some people are where they are because they simply will not believe the gospel. It's just that simple. And so that's our job. We got to try to reach people and help people. Let's pray tonight. Yes, sir. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this time. Thank you that uh, you could help us to take your word seriously, to apply it to our lives, to our hearts, and to just walk in the spirit that we shall not be filled with the lust of the flesh. Yes. God bless you. Appreciate you.
believe we hope you